evening. Welcome to Oakland Is. It is indeed a pleasure to be your hostess this evening. I'm Dr. Carol Ward Allen. I'm blessed to have a very special guest, Kathy Linsmeyer. Did I pronounce each your name right? Linsmeyer. Okay, why don't we let you uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you and, and what you do. I'm the financial aid director at Chabot College in Hayward. Mm -hmm. I am here representing uh, the California Community College program, financial aid program, and the I Can't Afford College. Um, the campaign to really help students and their families to know more about financial aid. I love the name, I Can Afford College. Yes. That's a nice uh, concept because so many young people believe, and families as well, believe that they can't afford college. Why do you think they have that belief, and uh, what do you really do within this program? How do you get the word out? Well, financial aid is um, probably misunderstood by a lot of people. You hear things from your brothers, your cousins, aunt, whatever. Um, so there are people who either just have never heard of the concept of getting money to go to college or they've been misinformed. Mm -hmm. So our our goal is to get you know get the word out that that uh, not only is college available but you can afford to attend financial aid is available. Um, so we have a, we have a lot of different aspects that we mm -hmm. go after uh, you know educating the, the public, the students, their families. What is financial aid? See, we just assume, I work in a college, as mm -hmm. you do, and we always assume everybody knows that there's financial aid available and that, that they even understand what financial aid is. But can you give us a definition? Financial aid is, pure and simple, money to assist you with your educational expenses. Mm -hmm. um, it comes in many forms, uh, grant aid or free gift aid, uh, student loans, work study, scholarships, grants, you know, anything that is a resource to help you pay for your educational expenses. Um, so fin basically financial aid is not a scholarship. I mean, they will eventually have to pay it back, is that Not correct? necessarily. Oh, grant okay. aid, free aid is, is given freely. There are no, no uh, repayment type issues unless, you know, there are some uh, instances where if you drop out of school or after receiving money. However, it's free grant aid. Mm -hmm. And it's typically based, financial aid is typically based on, on financial need. Um, scholarships you tend to think of more as academic. They oh. are maybe based on academic performance, mm -hmm. merit, um, perhaps ethnicity, uh, program goals, things like that. So they're different. Uh, a loan, on the other hand, most people do think financial aid, you have to pay it back because the one form of financial aid they do understand is sure. a loan. And that is only one option um, okay. and the last one that we want you to think well, about. Well, as we go along, every once in a while, I'm going to let everybody know that you do have a wonderful website. And yes. it's www.icanaffordcollege.com. And I think it's going to show up on our prompter from time to time. But yes. just it's good to let people know mm -hmm. that we do have it. Uh, who is the I Can't Afford uh, campaign targeted to? Um, prospective students and their families, uh, mm -hmm. people who have never gone to college or have been out of college for you know 15 years and want to go back. Um, the I Can't Afford College program, the campaign itself, was initiated when the California Community College fees started to increase. They went from 11 to 18 to 26 dollars per unit. And at that point, it was recognized that, well, with that fee increase, more students are going to believe they can't attend college. And that was the whole impetus to get it going. Is it geared towards a certain age? Wonder if I've been out of school for a long time <coughs> and I now want to return to college. Maybe a working mother, a single mother, or just a father who has, is maybe out of work or whatever. Mm -hmm. what, what, how do they go about that? I would say that it, it geared toward all ages. Mm -hmm. um, high school students tend to be thinking along the lines of, well, what am I going to do when I graduate? So there's a whole population right there. But financial aid is, is not restricted to straight out of high school by any means. And I think that's important for everybody to know because so often, um, you know, anyone can attend college. Mm -hmm. I always try to let people know that, you know, I don't care what age you are, your life is just beginning, not mm -hmm. ending, and you should just try to go back to school and there are monies available. And I think sometimes many of us just are, you know, are frightened to go mm -hmm. into this uh, door and they need a program like yours. That's why I think it's such a great idea. Mm -hmm. They need to know that they can maybe go to your website, they can make a phone call and, you know, and touch base on another college, is that true? Correct. What I would recommend is that anybody um, take, you know, take a look. Go to the, to, to the website, ICanAffordCollege.com. 
If you type in your zip code, I believe it will bring up all the local, you know, the community colleges closest to you. So mm -hmm. right off the bat, that's going to give you contact information, tell you a little bit about the uh, about how to initiate the process. The the links to applications and the the wealth of information about what financial aid is, what you need to do to to uh, apply for and maintain it. Is, is is very comprehensive and is bilingual um, in Spanish. Oh, well, that's good to know. Yes, that's and it's one of the few. That's I mean, that's a huge thing sure. for an entire site to be completely bilingual um, because language uh, and and that's a very strong component of the the community college financial aid outreach is not letting language, for example, be a barrier. So then you, uh, if a, a Vietnamese student or a, a, a student of Asian descent mm -hmm. or obviously Hispanics and everything, they could have a link in there and, and uh, understand it based on language. Currently it is Span English and Spanish only, but I do believe that there is a, a movement toward including, I believe, Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about Chinese, but mm -hmm. there are different, the movement is going that direction because we understand yes. that, that it's a need. Yeah. And I also know that in the uh, financial aid departments, I know at our college, uh, there are different uh, language groups that can mm -hmm. be Access through, you know, counselors, etc. Right, and uh -huh. advisors. The um, in different different community colleges, different communities tend to have maybe a larger population. Sacramento apparently has a huge Russian, mm -hmm. so they are going to have ser some services geared toward that language. Okay. Sure. Um, how do I apply for it, and and is there a time limit? You know, what would you suggest to a student if they were coming to college mm -hmm. and they wanted to uh, get a loan? Um, you know, many times they wait to the last minute. What, what would you tell them, and how, what's don't? The, <laughs> <laughs> um, the the ideal time, and this is a, again a very strong point that we try to get across. The ideal time to apply for financial aid for, say, a fall semester mm -hmm. is in February of mm. the pre of the of the spring before, because there is a March second priority or a Cal Grant deadline for the state. Uh, a state grant mm -hmm. of March 2nd every year. So February, you got your, you've gotten your W-2s, you can prepare your taxes, your parents can prepare their taxes, and you can do the application in February, meet the March 2nd deadline, sure. and mm -hmm. have the maximum opportunity. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll ask you some more questions shortly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, keep going. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I wanted to ask you one other question. I if you know people are afraid of paper mm -hmm. they're very frightened of a lot of paper and many times they don't know how to fill out the forms they're afraid that maybe I'm putting giving you too much information mm -hmm. or whatever what would you suggest in that way what are the fears or are their fears justified no mm -hmm. um, it's it, it it can be tedious a lot you're right there are a lot of documents and whatnot the application itself is very self-explanatory it asks you for personal information. It tells you where to find it. Typically, mm -hmm. um, tax the ta the most cumbersome part is the is completing the financial. It comes mm -hmm. straight from your taxes, right. and it gives you the line item on 1040 line blah blah blah. Yeah. So it's not it's it mm -hmm. is it's much easier um, than than you would think. But more importantly is that the financial aid offices are available to assist you. And again, I'll go back to February, which is our peak application. We really want you to apply then. All the community colleges and community agencies uh, as well will um, provide workshops. We have uh, down at Chabot, for example, we have a financial aid festival every February and provide one on one, you know, general overview, one on one assistance with the applications and get you to, to meet that deadline. The other, um, the other push is. You know, everything's going online. Everything's becoming electronic, mm -hmm. and the Department of Ed is no exception. So the encouragement is to do the application online, collect your information. We get you to go online. Mm -hmm. You can apply. You can even sign it online, and mm -hmm. it speeds up the process. It's got edits in there. It helps walk you through. It's it, it really has come a long way since. Well, every once in a while, the people that need forms, uh, I'm sorry, need to know about a program mm -hmm. like this, uh, aren't. Don't, you know, don't have a, a computer. Mm -hmm. So if they needed to phone you or if they needed to get uh, brochures or something, is there a place where they could pick it up like at their local college? Correct. Or they can? Yes, yes, okay. absolutely. Um, one, of the, one of the disadvantages, I think, is that there, there's less information seems to be coming from the high schools just because of funding sure. issues and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, that typically for a high school student is where you would find out this information. Yes. Um, the I Can't Afford College um, 
program markets radio, TV, mm -hmm. um, billboards, so that a student, as you said, that I can't afford college, that's hard to forget. It's mm -hmm. easy to, to yes. easy to remember nice two thing. hours later. Yeah. And it kind of grabs you. So okay. that site would be a perfect spot to start. Okay, I want to just give a phone number, and it's 1-800. I can, and or you could dial 1-800-987-4226, okay? But knowing the I can part, so 1-800-987-4226 or 1-800-I-CAN. I think that's a great name. I, this is a great t-shirt. This is my gift. I'm happy to have it. <laughs> Orange is my color, you know? Isn't that nice? And it says, I can. I'm glad you have the can highlighted because so many times people, you know, think they can't. And college is all about that. So let me kind of lay that out here and should put it on for you, but I won't do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's lovely. Thank you. And I, I appreciate the gift, but I also think it's wonderful that we uh, have it. Are there any things you might want to add that I have left out, like... Um, Oh, myths. What about myths? That's something that we often want to know about. People have some myths and fears. Um, I believe a lot of pe a lot of students don't receive financial aid because they self disqual mm -hmm. they disqualify themselves. Um, either again because they they've heard uh, your you, your parents make too much money. It's yes. not you, you can't. Worst myth: you can't get financial aid to go to a community college, mm -hmm. and that's just not true. Um, at a community college, the the first thing you don't have tuition if you're a California resident, mm -hmm. but you do have enrollment fees, and there are several ways to try to get those fees waived. So um, that's financially based again. Another myth is that that uh, if you get financial aid at community college, you can't get it later, and yes. that's so. So more than anything, simple piece of advice is don't disqualify yourself. Do the well, application. Do so Let can. us assist you. Exactly. Okay. And if you're not eligible, mm -hmm. then you know. Exactly. But if you, you know, many students are amazed. They're like, I didn't know this existed. Yeah. So. Well, I want to thank you very much. We, we didn't have enough time on one level, but we, we uh, at least have uh, whet the appetite of many people who want to know more about it. And I really highly suggest that they go to your website. Mm -hmm. And please don't fear asking for money and don't think you don't deserve it because I know often people are frightened to death to ask for some money well wonder if I don't make it but just say to yourself that you can and you can and it'll happen and the community college right. is the best kept secret in the, the, uh, the Bay Area the whole California state <laughs> 109 colleges that we have here Correct. that can service all of us and all of the students and I just say take an opportunity to experience I can thank you so much Thank, Thank you very much for being with us. Welcome back to Oakland is. Yes. We have another very uh, important guest. Hello, Tony. How are you? This is my friend Tony Cook. And uh, when I get in a pinch, I call on her and I said, Tony, I need you. Most of the time she'll say yes. Once in a while she'll deny me. But anyway, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm so glad to have you here. Um, Tony and I have been talking for a while, and we felt that it was important for people to know some of our feelings about ethnic studies, black studies the direction it's going, where it should go in the future. And, and we just had some basically basic concerns. What are some of yours about the d direction of ethnic studies now that you're the new department chair at Laney College? Yeah. That's something else I'm going to hold the host responsible for, <laughs> is encouraging me to do that. I think um, ethnic studies, and for people in watching this who don't know it, ethnic studies really is on most campuses. It highlights many aspects, the multifaceted aspects, of four primary groups, African Americans, Native Americans, Latinos, inclusive other Mexican Americans, as well as Asian Americans. And Asian in a global sense, and not just Chinese or Vietnamese or Laotian. Um, and I believe that this is probably one of the most important departments on 
any college campus, whether it's community college or a uh, liberal arts college or a university campus, because it really is the 21st century. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. And what disturbs me tremendously, though, is that, you know, years ago, when it was more of an active community, uh, you had more students that were participating. It seems like as we get more and more of the younger people, they're further away from the uh, understanding of the importance of ethnic studies or black studies. Why do you believe that is? Well, I think it's um, several dimensions. And one is that um, they don't have access to this in their 9 through 12 environment. And so coming to a college campus, perhaps our challenge is to promote its importance better and its transferability. I think you have to be very pragmatic about it. And by that I mean by taking our courses, yes, you do satisfy for those mm -hmm. who want to transfer, university, UC and California State, or any other college or university you want to attend in the United States. Uh, you can satisfy requirements. The other dimension is um, perhaps it's a sign that we don't love ourselves as much as we should, and that's all the groups. Yes. But don't you think also there's another problem that sometimes uh, their parents or either their counselors or their teachers even are saying, stay away from that course because that's not going to do you any good, you aren't going to make any money. And forget the fact that uh, the course also is a character builder. It's also one that just makes you, if you love yourself, it helps you love yourself, it helps you have a better understanding of your family, it helps you build your philosophy your myot and so forth, you know? What yes, you it does. And it uh, also lays the groundwork for our up-and-coming W.B. Du Boises and all the other scholars that have come before us. And you're absolutely right. There continues to be a um, reducing of importance mm -hmm. as to what are you going to do with African American studies or what are you going to do with ethnic studies. And while I don't want to be chiding, nobody asks um, non-people of color what they're going to do with their PhDs in an ethnic group. Uh, at um, City College in San Francisco, for example, they have broadened their ethnic studies department to include those from the Middle East. And I suspect as particularly our Arab-speaking population grows from Fremont up, that we will be exploring including that group also. And for whatever you believe about the aftermath of 9-11, one of the problems where they didn't have enough Farsi speakers. Mm -hmm. And so, and everybody knows if you follow the African studies movement, that when the African countries became independent in the 60s, one of the reasons we have African study centers is because it blew up the same informational hole that sure. they've got now. So I always consider this as important, and we have some up and coming young scholars all over the United States that are responding to the call, and will be the W.E.B. Du Bois, and mm -hmm. will be the uh, Ida Francis. Uh, Wellslings, and so, um, and they get started right there at community college. Well, also, you know, when I, I sit in the studio, and I know that uh, you have uh, wonderful volunteers that put their time in because they understand the importance of getting the information out, and, you know, a, a young uh, Gordon Parks, maybe upcoming, that are uh, uh, camera persons, photographers, uh, artists that we know about, that, you know, uh, young uh, Josephine Bakers, you know, and it can be a variety of things. But at the same time, I want people to know, and I think what Black Studies uh, specifically does, is it lets young people know that there's more than just rappers uh, that are uh, doing, uh, you know, contributing to our society, that there are some great economists and uh, a variety of people and you know even now an astronaut going up into space. Absolutely you know? and I think this is probably the fourth African-American sure. that is going up but even um, and a credit to you the variety of African-American studies courses that you teach I've learned a lot from you mm -hmm. to uh, you. learn the importance of the black experience through film. Mm -hmm. I think I just said to you and privately today I'm probably watching more black films than I've ever watched. Sure. And certainly uh, those post uh, or pre mm -hmm. uh, Sweetback. Yes. Because of the wide variety you have in your own collection. And you see this, and we have, for most people who may don't know it, it's not just African American students that are in our class, it's very global mm -hmm. in our class because uh, Laney, where we both are, there is a um, 
a significant population of Ethiopian students, Nigerian students, as well as students from the other uh, lands that I previously spoke about in their own dimensions. And you see them all in our classes, as well as all of us in their classes. And so uh, you're absolutely right. In fact, I tell my students that if you all think you invented hip hop and there was nothing before you, then go back and get Paul Lawrence Dunbar's A Negro Love Song, because if you don't know the hip hop rhythm, you will not be able I, to recite I, this poem. I agree with you. I agree with you. And what is so wonderful is that when you get the myriad of African students from the, you know, from our vast motherland, uh, they come to this country and they're even more excited to take African courses really because are. then they learn about their history, you know. And I think globalism, when we're talking about a global economy, uh, we must always remember that many of our leaders were always Pan-African and that, that was global way before it was always. even an idea. And once we understand that and understand that economy and all. Uh, one final thing, um, what do you think of Ron Dellums being our next mayor? Oh, there's a new sheriff in town. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm uh, delighted and I think Oakland has been honored that he would take from his tomorrows. Because most of us, we have more yesterdays than we have tomorrows. And come to Oakland with his vision and his energy. And I think it's a challenge to us, uh, particularly in the African American community, that we have but a small window to ensure that there are more Ron Dellums, mm -hmm. there are more Carol Ward Allen, there are more Lionel Wilsons, uh, which means that we're going to have to deliberately push those in our colleges and mid-level managers out front because I honestly don't think God's going to give us another shot at this. Well, the other wonderful thing is is that I think all of us, and, and especially um, Ron Dellum's mere elect, uh, understands the importance for us to embrace our young people and let them, and prepare them to carry the banner and that means all of us have to let go, but when we let go, we must make sure that they're prepared. And if we don't uh, have courses like the Ethnic Studies and have more conferences to prepare them, because don't you find, I know I do, energy and synergy within those classrooms, they are willing and able and want to be they leaders. Absolutely they absolutely just waiting for somebody to give them the torch. Give them the push mm -hmm. and give them the hope. And you're absolutely right to be prepared, and especially ensconced in who they are. Because everybody that we talk about in our classes, they've all said if you don't know your past, you're doomed to, to repeat it. Yes. And it's to give them that we, our children who go into teaching, we all give them Carter G. Woodson's mm -hmm, The mm -hmm. Miseducation of the Negro. And so you're absolutely right in terms of not only just pushing them out there, but pushing them within a context. And we're very fortunate to be in the classroom because part of our history is it's not those of us who have more yesterdays than we have tomorrows that paved the way. Mm -hmm. it, we have to remind ourselves that it was children, it was young people, was college students. Sure. And no matter what television says or no matter how we fashion and remake the history, this is what was the 60s, this is what was the 40s, mm -hmm. this is what was the 20s, mm -hmm. both here and in Africa. And finally, one of the things that I always say to them, I say, if you don't know your history, any history will do. And, and we just have to let young people know that, you know, uh, that we, we, had an, we have an economic um, background, that we have a rich culture, that we have much more than music and dance. And that's not to put music and dance down because we, we need to do that as much as we possibly can. In fact, when I leave here tonight, I'm going to go get some music and do some dancing. i do something, you know. But my point is, is that we must develop in them. And, and, and ethnic studies, as far as I'm concerned, cannot die. We must make sure that we reinvent it. I think we're trying to do that. We're trying to put some courses in that speak to today and not yet just yesterday. We put hip hop into it. That's got to be part of it as well. And along with that, all the other things. And, and let me get your final statement on that as we kind of close out. Well, I think with the Peralta Colleges, I mean, not only are we blessed to have both history, forward thinking, and um, to remember Atlanta, 
But we have uh, Dr. Siri Brown at Merritt, who is exposing our children to a, an international experience. Mm -hmm. This year she's taking a group not only to Ghana, uh, not only to Jamaica, but to Ghana. And next year, I understand next summer, she will be adding yet another country. And for our students, this is very important because I'm always reminded of the line in For Colored Girls. I used to be queen of the Nile until I went to Harlem, and now my radius is four square blocks. Dr. Siri Brown does a lot to break that reality in terms of not only our young people, mm -hmm. but our adults. And she's given them a vision and a hope and a global. And so that as we give them what's in the books sure. and what through field trips and you give them through film, she gives them an actual experience. And all of that's done through ethnic studies. And we have about four or five major teachers, uh, Leroy Appleby, Ray Richardson, who am I leaving out? But some of great- yeah, Mary Lewis. Mary Lewis. Dr. We, Mary Lewis. Dr. Mm -hmm. Mary Lewis, yes. And that's what I think a television then also needs to understand. We're not just, um, this is a side hobby, that our instructors are very well prepared, uh, not only with the doctorate, but have uh, concentration, and many of them have written articles. And serve in the community on a daily basis. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. they come not only with academic experience, but experiential. Exactly. And what they do. So that if we talk about black politics, mm -hmm. we can talk black, about black politics from an eye experience. Exactly. Not just from a book experience. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a... Uh, We're going to have uh, to wind down now, but thank okay. you so much. Oh, you're welcome. I don't mean then to we stop you. Yeah, we okay. get started. We don't know how to stop. Okay. But, but anyway, thank you. Thank you so much for being on, and we really appreciate it very much. Uh, one final thing I'd like to say, and I often say this in class, is that you have to keep learning because black power without brain power is only skin deep. Okay? Thank you very much, Tony Cook. Thanks. Appreciate it very much. You got it. Always. <laughs> I think it is.